you draw on Microsoft Paint, you can make race car parts. And if you can make race car parts, you can make a mill. Which is important because I need a mill to make some, make some of these parts. Uh, because I can draw on Microsoft Paint, I can engineer my own mill. Alright, it's a little more complicated than that. But in reality, if you can draw two-dimensional objects, you can turn them into three-dimensional objects. And if you can design your own three-dimensional objects, you're basically an interdimensional wizard. So uh, come on in and I'll show you how we're making our homemade CNC gantry mill so that we can actually cut the O-ring grooves in the top of our intercoolers. Uh, they'll hopefully be... The perimeter should, for those should be available right around the time the full-length video is uh, up live. This is our gantry. This is a crusty old homemade CNC mill that a buddy of mine gave me and we are going to bring it back to life and we're going to use it to make a larger, heavier duty one uh, to cut aluminum. But a lot of this stuff is stuff you can actually make at home. If you have a welder and a 3D printer, you'd be amazed at what you can do. I mean, sure, you can buy lead screw carriers or you can just use skateboard bearings and a 3D printer, press another bearing in there, boom. Stuff holds it together. And let's see if we can get this thing up and running. We have some old, just traditional stepper motors, but also got some closed loop, newer stepper motors that are gonna be a little more accurate and a little more reliable, um, especially with my questionable ability at wiring. Now you may be wondering how 3D printed components are gonna be solid enough and rigid enough uh, for machining of metal. Well, in reality, these components aren't really holding any weight. All they're doing is holding the bearings themselves. That'll actually have to get pressed in there. I use a vise to press that in. The end plate is actually what holds the uh, horizontal load from our Acme threaded lead screw here. The stepper motor mounted on the end here isn't doing anything other than trying to twist the shaft. So it's 3D printing is perfectly adequate. Uh, for holding uh, that sort of load there. So yeah, we're gonna get this thing assembled and see if we can machine some parts. Somebody once told me something that uh, has really helped me a lot in life, especially when it comes to making these things. Um, if you can't make it right, make it adjustable. So uh, all of these holes are a little bit larger than they need to be, but that allows a little bit of adjustment on our little carrier for the shaft here. Well, didn't get very far before we ran into an issue. So I 3D printed these new, uh, motor holders. Here's the old one that was on it, which honestly probably would have been fine, but you know, might as well, if I have to take it apart, might as well replace everything with new. Um, I made it wrong. I made it backwards. I put the M6 screws on this side when they need to be on that side. So, you know, we're going to print more. Printer's chugging away, so we'll get those finished up tonight and then I'll inset all the brass fittings and after that we have to cure it in the oven so that it goes from a polycrystalline structure to a monocrystalline structure which makes it a lot more rigid and prevents creep from happening but hey man uh can't even make it one step without messing up that's just part of life and part of building stuff yourself so uh we'll get those put in the oven and make some parts or more accurately make some tools to make some parts Anyway, well, the print just finished. It's about 10 o'clock right now. So came out to the shop and gonna see if I can put some inserts in and get these things heat treated. Let's take a look at the printer. Yeah. So, oh, and air compressor turned on. I guess we do have a little bit of a leak, but all right, there's one. And over here is where I put in all the inserts for my throttle body adapters for anybody who's wondering. So yeah, I guess I'm going to press in some inserts, but I did run out of the M5 inserts. So I'm going to actually be removing these, putting them in the correct ones and throwing these in the trash. Here is a uh, pretty solid 3D printing tip. So with these brass inserts, they are pretty awesome. A great way to affix any hardware uh, to a 3D printed part. It's a lot stronger 
then putting the threading straight into the 3D printed part. Uh, yeah, so one thing that you can do to make these a pretty decent amount stronger, particularly for uh, the small bolts, is wherever you design your hole into the part, if you extend past the depth of your insert uh, with the minor diameter, you can then go back through with a tap and which is, yep. And use the thread portion as a guide. And this is better than 3D printing the threads themselves for a number of reasons. But now you have a brass insert hole with threads that go all the way down to about here. Cool, so we got all the brass inserts in on the correct side this time. And uh, we're just gonna put these guys in the oven for the next 12 hours at 200 degrees. That will assure that the plastic recrystallizes with larger crystal structure than when 3D printing, so it should make it a decently bit stronger, which probably overkill for my application. But most importantly, this will keep the screws from creeping over time. So we're gonna do 10 hours. And that guy will turn off. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Gantry is mostly put together, but I made the holes on this too small to put the socket in. So we're just gonna open that up with a grinder and you know, have at it. No, let's just completely redo this. You, I wouldn't have this problem if I actually measured these before I made them. Or, I don't know, chose a drill bit that was the right size. Alright, let's see if I've got a larger bit. Hmm, if your drill bit is so dull that it can't cut through plastic, should probably throw it away. Look at that. Well, I guess I'm gonna be throwing a drill bit away. Oh, I could just reprint these, but uh, why do it the right way when you can you know, take more effort to do it the wrong way. Since I am doing this the wrong way more than one way, um, another, a couple tips. If you have to cut, always make sure you cut towards yourself. That way if the knife slips, it has something to stop on because you wouldn't want this thing to go flying off. You'd never know where it'd end up. And that's dangerous, so. Yeah, it's a little bit of slack. We need to tighten it just a little bit more. All right, that should be pretty close to no backlash. Oop. Ha ha. Well, we need to weld this broken tab on here so that we can hopefully get this thing up and running. Let's uh, see what we can do. find out if it works.
All right, let's take a look at this. Focus. Oh, hi, kitty. Yeah, that'll work. Good enough. That looks very square. Whoops. A little bit of percussive maintenance will fix that light. Oh, sorry, kitty. Rinse and repeat. All right. Okay, little kitty, I'm gonna need you to move so that I can set this gantry down. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we have movement, little kitty. And this one also moves. Cool. I need to lubricate these linear bearings, but hey. It's starting to look like a machine. All right. Now we're going to put our motor mounts on here. Hmm, if I position it this way, it'll be easy to tighten the coupler, but it'll, it'll look funny and yeah, whatever. But make sure this is positioned correctly because there's a little bit of slop in this is, uh, I'll put the coupler on and then I'm going to slide this rail all the way to this side and use that to gauge where this needs to sit, tighten it, and then repeat the process on that end. All right, let's see. New bearing. These bearings have a, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it has a little bit of a lip on it so that it holds and clamps around this bar and that's what locates the shaft here. The, the horizontal linear rails are Acme thread, but this vertical one just looks like it's a piece of all thread, which it, Honestly, might just be a piece of all thread. You could absolutely make this with uh, thread from Home Depot and uh, clamp it in a drill, spin it down. Realistically, you could make a functional CNC table using uh, all thread from Home Depot if you really wanted to. Uh, be pretty easy. In fact, the attachments for the linear rails, not the linear rails, but the, the attachments for the lead screws are literally just 3D printed. And if you know the thread pattern and you know how to use CAD, that is a really simple operation. Well guys, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you. You should probably subscribe and be uh, following along. Next week, we're gonna show you how we are making the supercharger adapters for the small block Fords. Uh, there's some short videos up on Instagram and Facebook as well. And on the smaller Fords, I've already started editing that footage. It should be out next Friday or Saturday. Um, and the video after that, hopefully we'll have a CNC router table up and running. You guys are awesome.